Hello everyone, my name is Michael at michaelstutorials.com and in this video I'm going to show you a bit more in-depth um, to do with uh, UMMO, um, the UMMO net object class. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to create a new project and I'm going to import UMMO and that should be it. And I'm going to do this. Um, you, um, oops, net object example. Let it compile and create it. Alright, very good, very good. So let's go ahead and open up the demo scene one. In here, you will find a simple scene, a Unity project example, I believe, um, the Viking demo. Um, and you can find the object called UMMO, which is the main prefab for UMMO, of course, as we know if you've watched some of my other tutorials. Um, and you'll see you have player character on authoritative setup. We could make it non-authoritative, but authoritative is always better. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, if we, collect, we um, select that object and we take a look, you will see the options for the UMO net object. And I just want to go over a little bit of what they will do and how you might want to use them. Um, yeah. So the first thing we have is object type. You could make it an NPC or a player. This is obviously a player as it is the player controller, etc. So we're going to leave it as player. Camera to activate on local player. Um, the last I used that, uh, it wasn't actually doing anything yet. So I don't know if you need that yet, if he added it, the developer or not. But um, for now, you might as well just skip it because a lot of what you're going to do with the camera is going to be through script anyway, you're not even going to have to worry about it. Um, handle scripts based on situation. If I uncheck that, all that goes away, right? If I check that again, you get this. Now what this is, is it lets you decide where in the client server system the script will be located on the prefab. So for a local client, it would put the point lights, Viking authoritative, you know, all this stuff it would track those however any scripts that are not in there and are attached to the prefab will be removed and will not exist on the clients local instantiation right but if you had server scripts these will only be on the server none of these scripts unless they're also added to client local will be on the client locals prefab you see um, and client remote is for other players on the client side, which is it's useful for sometimes controllers and other objects. Um, and that, in my opinion, is the most important part. Absolutely 100% the most important part of the UMMO net object and is what makes UMMO so fantastic because it gives you so much freedom in the editor to make your server and client really work together in such a simple, neat way. It's awesome. Um, handle scripts based on runtime situation, you don't really need to worry about that. You're not going to use that much. Um, but if you are using it, chances are you're going to know what it means. So I'm not really going to go over that one. I'm going to skip that one. But it's, it's similar to this one, so keep that in mind. Input to check. In here, you would check if you go to Edit, Project Settings, Input. All the input in here that you are using in your scripts, you would add to the list of input to check. So if I was using an input type called um, inventory, I would simply add its name there and now it'll track that 
through the network. Um, and if you hit that button, it will go through the client network and the server and such, etc. It's it's it's, um, it's the second most important thing, and it's it's actually really useful. Um, you would use this for a lot of things, actually. Um, it's just it tracks all the user input, you know, what they're hitting, what they're pressing, etc. Um, and then synchronization settings. We want synchronized animations if you want to track the animations and show them on the server. So say the player had a running animation, you would want to synchronize the animations because you want to see the player running and not just moving around like a non-running person that's running, running creature thing that isn't running, yet it's running at the same time. And that was extremely confusing, all right? So confusing that it's hilarious, all right? <laughs> but I'm just going to go ahead and skip that for now. Um, Synchronized position, uh, self-explanatory, synchronized rotation, self-explanatory, it means it's going to synchronize back and forth between the server and the client, and you're going to, it's going to, it's just, it tracks it through the server, it's simple, I don't know how else to explain it, um, you should, you should be able to get that, it's, you know, um, and then you can choose the object that contains the animations, so if it, w if you had a prefab, and you press synchronize animations, and the animations weren't on the prefab exactly, you would find the object and put it here. And that uh, er erases some problems that might come up if you were to do it in a different way. Um, network view serializer mods, these basically allow for uh, extreme interpolation or extreme smoothing out of uh, the movements and such through the network. Like if there's lag and you're using those, it basically makes it look like there is no lag whatsoever, yet there is lag at the same time. But this just, it kind of makes it look like there's none. It's, it's, a, it's a neat little trick. Um, and sync legacy animations, you have one that I worked on in here. Let me see here. We have simply lerp transform, which is, you know, simply lerp smoothly interpolate the transform. Sync legacy animations, you know, that's if you're using legacy animations and not um, mechanim. Um, gradually update state, you're going to want that. And you also have, what is this? Hold on, let me read this. I haven't seen this one. Okay, let me see. I think I down, I uh, took in the wrong version of UMMO, but um, in yours you'll have one that is to do with mechanim, and you can you can track uh, the mechanim variables that you're using. If you know how to use mechanim, you'll know what I'm talking about. For example, like if you're using a float inside the mechanim system, um, you could track the name of that float in the net object, and it will it will syn synchronize that. Um, otherwise, it'll just ignore it, and that's how it'll synchronize mechanim animations. It tracks the uh, the values, names, and such. Um, and then we have activate callback function functions. They're useful, but they aren't necessarily like required. You know what I mean? Um, they're just helpful functions to to let you control how, like, what happens during the initialization of this this prefab, etc. You know, it's like creating a a start script for it. Yet it's you know you know what I mean. All right. Um, custom modules would be things like um, the net view uh, net object things uh, and you could make your own that does its own thing and that is also extremely useful for a lot of situations which I'll explain in another video another time um, but that is essentially all I have for this video I just wanted to quickly go over the details of the UMMO net object and its uses and its functionality. Uh, one thing I may have skipped is that if you have any character or object that's going to be synchronized through the network with scripts, um, you would want to put the UMMO net object on it. That is what it's for. It's for network objects that are going to be synchronized back and forth. Um, and yeah, that's it. It'll automatically add a network view as well. Um, and that's all I have to show you today. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. And um, if you haven't gotten UMMO yet, I highly recommend it. And that's all. Thanks for watching.